further introducing myself, my name is Sean Fantry. I'm the product manager for our industrial pipe clamps. Behringer manufactures industrial as well as sanitary pipe clamps. Today we're focusing on the industrial pipe supports, hangers, tube clamps, whatever you want to call them. They have many different names, but that's what we're focusing on the industrial side today. What we're going to go over today, this is our advanced course. We did have a basic um, course. We're going to review some of the things we went over in the basic course. Uh, really, we're going to uh, review only some specifics of the pr product, and uh, that'll be uh, pretty much the review from the basic course. Then we'll take it from there and go over sizing which we did cover in the basic course. We'll go into it a little bit more detail in the different um, OD sizes, uh, differences between pipe and tube, and how that relates to the clamp. Um, also, we will cover mounting selection and material selection. They were briefly discussed in the basic webinar. We'll go into more detail on the mounting uh, selection, why to select different mounting styles, and different materials and why you would select different materials for both the, the support hardware of the clamp and also the, the clamp pair um, materials. Then we'll kind of wrap everything up with the, uh, uh, an overview on system design as it pertains to pipe clamps. And so that would cover the spacing of the pipe clamps, the installation and torques required to tighten and, and install the clamps, loads, both axial loads of the, the pipe through the clamp and also uh, loads on the clamp itself in, in other directions, component isolation, different system components and, and how they should be isolated using the clamps and then that also correlates to the placement of the clamps in the system um, in relation to other uh, not only components but um, system uh, routing. Here we're showing just a typical clamp and the components used for it. So most clamps will use a cover plate and hex bolts. In fact, we recommend this in, um, in, in just about every instance of, of a clamp. The cover plate gives an even distribution as you tighten the hex bolts across the top of the clamp and, and provides an even force uh, on the clamp halves as they uh, clamp down onto the pipe or tube or other line to be mounted. Then we also show here on the bottom the mounting method. This one happens to be a weld plate. With the weld plate, that plate gets welded down. We have other different um, varieties, which you'll see. We'll go over those in detail in a little bit. What you see here, the clamp pair, uh, will cover the different selection and sizing of that. And then everything else is what we call the hardware, or the support hardware that supports that clamp pair. So that would cover the cover plate, the bolts, and then the bottom plate, whatever that may be. In this instance, the weld plate. First, we'll go over the uh, selection of a, of a clamp. And this is going to be a review of the basic course. So we'll go rather quickly through this. These are the five main things that you need in order to select your pipe clamp. And we're going to go over each one individually on a separate slide. So you'll need to know the application of the pipe clamp, and that will tell you what series you're going to use. You'll need to know the outside diameter of your, your pipe or tube or hose, and that will tell you what size. You'll also need to know how it's going to be mounted, if the threads are an issue, and any surrounding environmental factors that may uh, cause you to choose different materials or even a different series of pipe clamp. So first, you need to know about the application, and that'll allow you to, to choose what series of pipe clamp you're going to use. Here are our six main series of pipe clamp, the standard series being the most common Heavy series is for, as the name suggests, heavier service, heavier duty. The um, plastic is, is thicker and larger. The support hardware is all 
uh, thicker plates and larger diameter bolts. And as the clamp gets bigger, all of those components get thicker or larger. The twin series is a nice and effective way of mounting two lines right next to each other and keeping a regimented center distance. You use a lot of mobile equipment where you have hydraulic lines. There's, a, there's send and return lines that extend maybe out the boom of uh, an excavator or something similar to that. And uh, that's all where twin series are used a, a lot. Uh, or anywhere else that you've got multiple lines running side by side. Then we have our Heavy 4 Series. Heavy 4 Series is, is, a, is a very big clamp. It takes all over where the Heavy Series leaves off, which is the 8-inch pipe size, and goes all the way up through 30-inch. We'll see that in a little bit. And it incorporates a, a four-segmented design, thus the name Heavy 4 Series, where our other clamps are two halves of uh, uh, clamp pair. This is actually four quadrants because of the sheer size of it that allows us to keep a very uh, strict and regimented uh, tolerance on our dimensions here uh, and, uh, and, and effectively grip the pipe or tube that, that we're trying to secure. We also offer a saddle series, which is uh, consists of a U-bolt, four nuts, and some sort of a pad. There's two different types. There's long and short saddle. We'll go over that a little bit. And then we also offer a cushion-style clamps, um, which are used primarily in um, HVAC. You can see here copper tubing and um, you know pneumatics and lower pressure, some lower pressure hydraulics, mobile equipment. And uh, those types of applications will use the, the cushion style clamp. In order to select which series you're going to use for securing your line, you need to know a little bit about the series. So the standard series um, has a range quarter inch OD up through four and a half inch OD, four and a half inch OD tubing or four inch pipe size. And we give it a pressure rating. We give all our clamps a pressure rating. This one we say up to 2,000 PSI. Now, it doesn't come in contact with any pressure as a clamp's on the outside of the pipe. But this is your general starting point to tell you that this clamp can withstand any shock, vibration, noise, water hammer, and any system operating up to 2,000 PSI is capable of delivering. So the worst, most vibrating system operating at 2,000 PSI will be no problem for the standard series clamps. Now this is a, a general starting point for you to pick what series you're going to choose. If you have a system that's operating, and we do, we do this quite frequently, at 3,000, 4,000, sometimes up to 5,000 PSI, but it's a very static system. There, there's not any dynamic loads. There's no vibration. It's, um, it's a very uh, small closed loop type system and you're not going to see any shock or vibration, you can get away with using a standard series up to those, you know, those higher pressures. It's not a problem. So it really system design has to come into play here, and this is just a, a, a base point for you to start out and decide what clamp you should use. And it works the opposite way, too. When we see the heavy series, we'll see the higher pressure ratings that we, we allow for the heavy series. But at the same time, you may have something that's operating at a very low pressure. You might want to use the heavy series because it's you know, inside of a mine and it's going to come in contact with uh, other pieces of equipment. There's rocks are going to fall on it or it's on a, on a, um, you know, a drill ship. And even though it's the low pressure line, uh, there's going to be little vibrations on the ship or there's going to be, you know, in, a, in a ship you've got all kinds of you know, roll and pitch and yaw and all types of forces and moments on the clamp, you may want to go with a heavy series, even though the operating pressure of the line is low. So this is kind of your, your starting point. Uh, you can see the mounting configurations here for the standard series. Standard series has the most available mounting configurations. It's, be, it's able to be welded down, bolted down, mounted to a rail or a strut. It can be stacked on top of each other. We have a double weld plate, which is two side by side. We've got a group weld plate, which starts at three and goes uh, up to many, many positions long. You have different hardware options. You can have zinc plated steel, which is our standard material for standard series, 304 and 316 stainless steel. We can do it unplated if you want, if you're going to paint it. Um, so we have all those options. And then the insert, which is another na name for the clamp pair or the clamp halves, 
uh, would be polypropylene, santaprene, or aluminum. And you can see in the picture here, polypropylene is the black. The santaprene is the tan color. And it gets a little higher heat range. And then the aluminum for even higher temperatures, you can see the aluminum clamps. And we'll go over the temperatures um, a little further into the presentation. Our heavy series pipe clamps, you can see by the picture alone that the plates are thicker, the bolts are heavier duty, the plastic is bigger, uh, and the aluminum, the clamp pairs, everything is a little bit larger. The size range is larger too. The heavy series does start all the way down a quarter inch, but goes up through an eight inch pipe size, which has an eight inch 8.625 OD. Uh, pressures here, is, uh, we have two different types of heavy series, which we'll see in the next slide, a single heavy and a double heavy. And it's kind of hard to see in this picture here, but there's these are our single heavies. And then there's a double heavy back here. If you can see this here, now that I've highlighted it, um, it's hard to see, even, even more harder to see. But if you take a look at it now, uh, you may be able to see this double heavy. And we're going to show that in the next slide. Um, and here we give it a, a 5 PSI pressure rating. Again, this is that same starting point we were talking about, just as a general rule of thumb. And then the double heavy is able to withstand twice the amount of pressure uh, or shock and vibration as a, as a single heavy. And another th thing that's important in, in looking at these, and let's go to the next slide here. Here's your single heavy. You've got a single weld plate, a single cover plate, two bolts, and then the clamp pair. On the double heavy, you have a double weld plate. It's one single weld plate with double mounting, and then there's one single piece cover plate with four holes in it. And so you have two pairs of plastic on the double weld plate with the double cover plate and four bolts. And so that's what allows us to achieve that double heavy duty rating. The other thing that's important with this also is for, um, and we'll talk about this a little bit later, the axial movement of the pipe. And so it has twice the gripping force or twice the shear force required to actually slide a pipe through the clamp. So if it's supporting a lot of weight um, or you need uh, to support a lot of vibration or it's a very high pressure system that has a lot of noise and a lot of um, shock, then you may need to use the double heavy duty clamp. And they're used quite frequently in the offshore industry on the um, drilling rigs and um, other other support vessels. Then we have our twin series. Our twin series is a smaller range. It only ranges up to an inch and a quarter pipe size, which has a 1.66 OD. And we give it a lighter lighter duty pressure rating than, than even the standard series. The reason being there's only a single bolt. It's a 5 16 bolt, so it's a little bit bigger than our quarter 20 that we use in our standard series. But again, it's a, it's a single bolt for two lines. And we give it a lower pressure duty. Like I said earlier, we have mobile equipment manufacturers who are operating at three to 5,000 PSI, and they use these twin series clamps all the time. So um, it's kind of a, a um, application-specific thing that needs to be determined as far as uh, whether or not you can uh, use one series versus the other. And here, the twin series, you can see we've got polypropylene and we've got santaprene. Those are the only two materials. We don't make the twin series in aluminum. The hardware typically is zinc plated. We can do other materials. And um, it can be weld mounted, mounted to a rail or strut. And here you see them stacked on top of one another. So the stacking kits are also available for the twin series. The last series that will, well, one of the second to last series that we'll show is our heavy four series. The heavy four series picks up where the heavy series left off at the eight inch pipe size and goes up through a 30 inch pipe size. Really, the main difference being this four sections or the four quadrants of the clamp. This is a design that we have a patent on, so there's no one that makes the clamp in this size, similar to this. Um, the uh, other competitors to ours, once you get to these larger sizes up over, say, 12-inch pipe, they are not able to offer a clamp with the polypropylene, even the halves. They don't work once you get that big. So 
and we have uh, this patented design, so they're not able to make the four quadrants. So they make other type of all-metal straps, and some with little like rubber pads in the corners, like a hex hanger type thing. But they don't make anything that's substantial uh, as this clamp. The smallest one, to give you an idea, for 8-inch pipe, weighs 100 pounds. The plates are 1-inch thick. The bolts are 1 and an eighth. Um, I mean, it's really a big, heavy-duty clamp. And the application for this would be mm, primarily offshore. Um, other applications would include high-flow water systems, like cooling tower water, where you've got large lines, and they have an opportunity to move or bend. And typically, in those types of systems, you would have maybe one of these types of supports you know, at, at a bend or towards the bottom of the leg or towards one side to kind of secure uh, the whole system, and then other types of supports maybe in the middle. But um, those are those are those. That's really the the application for these. So far, only polypropylene material is all that we've made these in. Obviously, we can make them in santoprene. We have the the tools and the molds. Um, we just haven't had that application. And then uh, other materials, if 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 necessary, we could look into plain steel for the hardware. But if you need 304, 316, zinc plated steel, we could do it all. The last one I'm going to mention is our, our saddle series. The picture shown here is what we call our long saddle. So we have a long saddle and we have a short saddle size. They cover uh, all the sizes from uh, half-inch pipe through 30-inch pipe, and they're primarily used in maybe the oil and gas industry, the offshore industry, the shipbuilding industries, uh, water process, things like that, where there's, there's a lot of large pipe, but there's not a lot of pressure, there's not a lot of vibration, and sometimes you want to allow uh, like in the chemical industries, there's a lot of heating and cooling, and they have thermal expansion and contraction of the pipes. And those pipes actually move uh, and will slide through the U-bolt. And where the saddle series comes into play, this, this pad protects and isolates the pipe from the support structure. A lot of times the support structure is either steel or concrete. And if that pipe's moving, it's either a steel pipe scraping on steel or it's steel scraping on concrete. Either way, it's not good for the pipe. Eventually, it's going to cause stress on the pipe and cause fractures and, and cause the pipe to be worn or destroyed, and then your pipe's going to fail. So this pad here, ice clamp, or I'm sorry, excuse me, the pipe from the support structure and uh, protects it from scraping against that. So anywhere that a U-bolt type clamp would be used, these saddle clamps can be used too, and they can be purchased either the U-bolt separately then from the saddle or the whole thing as a complete unit. And we'll show here too, there's, we have two different designs. The long saddle, which is the one that was pictured, shows the saddle with the U-bolt the going through the saddle, and then this would all sit on your support structure. The short saddle, the U-bolt doesn't go through the saddle. The saddle ends short of the U-bolt, and the saddle has these two locator pins. And so you would have to drill four holes, essentially, in your support structure here, to, uh, two to hold the saddle in place and to keep it from moving, and then two on the ends uh, for your U-bolt to go through. So if you already have two holes and you have a U-bolt, this one's easy to just throw in there and slide in. This one requires a little bit more labor for installation and is not really that commonly used. So the long saddle is the, the one that, that we see more, more frequently. That kind of covers the product overview from our basic course. Um, I don't think there, there should be any questions. It's pretty, pretty straightforward. Uh, if there are, you guys can type questions in to the chat, and I can try to answer that. But I'm going to continue on and um, discuss a little bit about sizing and selection. If you look here, um, the most important thing I, I want to discuss is the, the difference in tubing and pipe. And so, for example, we'll take the half-inch size here. Half-inch, a lot of times we'll have people call up and say, I need a half-inch clamp, standard series, you know, weld mount, zinc-plated hardware is fine, polypropylene clamp has. The one key piece of information is half-inch what? And so we don't know if it's tubing or pipe. And the difference being that tubing, if it's called a half-inch tube, it has a half-inch OD. Tubing is always rated by its outside diameter. So one inch has a one inch OD, one and a half has an inch and a half OD, and so it is exactly what it says it is on the OD. Pipe, on the other hand, is a nominal size, so it's a half inch nominal pipe 
or uh, that's the inside diameter is nominally half inch. Then you have your wall thickness, and then your OD of a half inch pipe is 0.84. And so all half inch pipe, regardless of schedule, is going to have a 0.84 OD on it. Wall thickness by schedule, and then the ID would actually vary a little bit, and that's why they call it a half inch nominal inside diameter. Um, the exceptions to these would be copper tubing or copper pipe that has its own OD and uh, like some coated pipes. But if you call out for hydraulic and it's steel pipe, stainless steel pipe, hydraulic pipe, it's always going to be a .84 on the OD. Uh, PVC pipe is the same thing. Uh, .84 would be the OD of half inch. So that's the main difference between these two. And that OD is going to correlate to this diameter here, which is the ID of the clamp. This is going to be the same as the OD of your pipe or your tube. And so you can see there's a large difference between 0.5 and 0.84. If somebody said, I've got a half-inch OD tube, but they really had a half-inch pipe, it wouldn't fit inside that clamp. You wouldn't even be able to get it around it. So that diameter then, when you call out your half-inch pipe, at 0.84, this will be 0.84 inside this clamp. You can see here we have this dimension, O. O is the space between these clamp halves. This O dimension is included when we measure this diameter. And so you can see it's a perfect circle with this gap in here. As you take up the tolerance of that gap, um, as you take up that tolerance of that compress these two, what causes the gripping force on the clamp. That's what secures and holds this in place. Now, one other thing I'd like to mention at this point is that you can vary a little bit on diameter, but not much. Um, our rule of, of, of sizing odd-sized pipe, tube, or hose is that the OD of your hose can vary over or under by half of this O dimension. And so the standard series, this O dimension, always the same. Uh, it's always 1 16th of an inch, regardless of what group size. So that means you can vary over or under by half of that 16th, which would be a 32nd of an inch, or 0.015. And so if you have a hose size that's 0.510, it would fit in a half-inch tube size. But if you have a hose that's 0.540, it would not fit in this half-inch uh, tube size. So you would have to specially bore it out. I hope that that makes sense. So we will then continue on. Uh, I just wanted to explain the difference between the pipe and tube sizes and let you know that that is important to know uh, when you're sizing a clamp. Hose, on the other hand, is different. Um, hose, they all have different ODs. There's different schedules of hose. There's different, or they call them grades of hose. And even if you pick one standard hose, like an SAE size, um, 100 SAE R16, um, and you pick three different manufacturers, manufacturers A, B, and C will all have different ODs on that. And so when you're, when you're sizing a clamp for hose, there's no standard sizes for hose. We need to know the OD in order to see which one it fits in. And that's when this, this dimension and this variation will come into play. So once you pick out your size, you know your size, and you've picked out your series, then you need to know how you're going to mount that clamp. Mounting selection, we've got two slides here that are going to go over the different mounting selections. And you can see, like for example, a weld mount is the most common. And you can see here that it's available in all of the series. Standard, heavy, double heavy, twin, and half series. This is where you would bottom plate, you would weld it down, and the rest of the clamp bolts down on top of it. Uh, that's the most commonly used. The second most commonly used is, is this bolt-down plate. It's very similar to a weld plate. It's just a little bit longer. and has these holes that extend out past the, the clamp 
uh, pair. And then it can be bolted down to the support structure. This is good for applications where you can't weld. Either you don't have a, the, the capabilities to weld, or you're mounting to something that you can't weld to, like wood or drywall or uh, any other type of um, you know, uh, concrete or anything like that where you want to bolt it down. Um, another nice thing about the bolt mount is if you want to, you can weld it in place as well. This is only available in our standard series, as are these next two, which are our double weld and our group weld. I'll talk about them both at the same time because essentially they are very similar. These ones have a continuous bottom plate. The double is, is, is two positions. The group weld plate starts at three positions and goes up to uh, as many as 27 positions long, and depending on the group size. So what you would do here, and this is an easy way to just weld down one plate and then be able to bolt down as many two uh, clamps, hoses, pipes, whatever, uh, as necessary. And the nice thing about these is that you can take off one at a time by removing the bolts and cover plate and plastic or, or aluminum or clamp hair uh, for one hose, tube, or pipe at a time without interrupting the ones on either side of it. And so this gives you the, the flexibility to work on a line or replace one line at a time, whereas some competitors will have this as one molded piece and then one complete top plate, and you have to take the whole thing off, and then these ones are not secure anymore while you're working on this one. And uh, if it's upside down, if it's hanging off a wall or a ceiling or anything like that, then it would really become an issue because now you need to support these other pipes and tubes uh, while you remove this one, and that becomes a whole whole other issue. So um, it, it, that's one of the benefits of having these, these group well plates or these multiple position plates uh, with individual clamps rather than one complete unit. Then also we have a number of different ways to mount our clamps to either a rail or a strut. And the rail mounting I have divided into really two different types. We have our proprietary rails and then our DIN style rails, which are a DIN 3015 we'll see later as a specification for block style pipe clamps. The, the rail mounts with rail 1, 2, and 3, rail 1 is a standard series. Rail two and three is for heavy series. And where normally you would have these rail nuts, like you see over here, and you see over here, we also make rail nuts for our rail one. But the benefit of that is that the weld plate can be slid right into the rail. And so you have this whole clamp with a weld plate, and you're able to slide the weld plate into rail. It acts as rail nuts. You don't need these rail nuts. And then you can mount your clamp to that. So you have your choice here to use rail nuts or a weld plate. The rail nuts, I, honestly, there's really no need for rail nuts for the rail one. The whole reason is that you can inventory a clamp with a weld plate and then also mount it to a rail without any additional parts or purchasing or switching anything around. And so it gives you a more versatile inventory. And then if later you decide you want to take it out of the rail and weld it down somewhere, you have that option. Whereas with a rail nut, those can't be welded down. The Rail 2 and the Rail 3 are in the Heavy Series. The Rail 2 covers our Heavy Series groups 3, 4, and 5. That weld plate will fit in the Rail 2. And then the Heavy Series group 6 can fit in the Rail 3. And so that'll give you up to 2-inch tube size in the Heavy Series and up to 4.5-inch tube size in the Standard Series on these rails. Then we have our DIN style rail, rail 0 and rail 4. Rail 0 is for our standard and twin series. And you see here these little rail nuts. And it's a smaller profile rail. It's not as wide as this rail, so you're not allowed to, or it doesn't allow, the weld plate to fit inside there. So you have to use it with these rail nuts. This is the typical rail mount style that all of our competitors would have. So we have that same rail and rail nut mounting option. The rail 4, not shown here, but it's our heavy series, and it's also a DIN-style rail. Uh, you have to use rail nuts, and it's exactly the same as the competitor rails that conform to that DIN spec. And then to top all that off, we offer a strut-mounted clamp. And so here you can see these, these strut clips, we call them. It's a spring-loaded clip, 
that slides into the strut channel, either from the end or down in the center, it pops down and then the twist locks into place. This bottom piece twists independent of the top piece. And that allows you to mount our clamp to any existing strut channel that you might find in uh, a lot of manufacturing facilities. And we have these strut clips for our standard, heavy, and twin series. And then the last kit or the last mounting configuration uh, is not necessarily a mounting configuration, but it's our stacking kit, which includes everything you need to take an existing clamp and bring it one level higher. There's always confusion as to what the stacking kit consists of. And so here you see a breakout of it. You've got your uh, clamp pair, your two stacking bolts, which would go into an existing bottom plate, and we'll see that in a minute, and then this safety plate that locks it all in position. So this is like if you imagine a Lego block. This is everything you need to take a clamp that you already have and make it a level higher. And how that works, we'll, we'll, we'll show you here. You've got your existing clamp, and you've got your stacking kit with your two stacking bolts and your safety plate. And so you take your existing clamp, and this one happens to be on a weld plate. It could be on a rail, it could be on a base plate, it could be on a strut channel, it could be the bottom plate, doesn't matter, it's not necessary. Start with any clamp. So you start with an existing clamp, and what you do is you remove the parts of that clamp here and leave your bottom plate or your bottom support, whatever you're using. You take your stacking kit and move it in. So here you have your plastic going down, your bolts, and then your safety plate. The safety plate has a hex cutout which locks the stacking bolts in place and keeps them from turning. Uh, then you're able to mount the rest of your clamp down on top of that, essentially creating your stack of two. And then for every level higher you want to go, you would just add one more stacking kit. If you want three levels, you start with an existing clamp and add two stacking kits. And so for our standard series, you can stack up to five high. We wouldn't recommend going any higher than that. And um, in the heavy series, for sizes under two inch, we would recommend that you would go no higher than five. And then for larger sizes, uh, you wouldn't want to go any higher than four high in the uh, over two inch uh, size in the heavy series. So now you've chose your series, you chose your mounting configuration, you've sized your clamp. The last thing you need to consider is your material selection. Uh, you need to know and decide what type of cover plate, bolt, and bottom or securing plate or part material you'll need. You also need to determine what type of clamp pair material you'll use. And there's a few things that'll um, determine which material that you'll want to choose. And the four main things here are temperature, uh, the presence of any type of water, the presence or use of any type of specific chemicals, and then you need to take all of that into consideration with the application of what it's be where it's being used, and how it's being used, uh, the environment. So um, we'll kind of go over each one individually. The temperature is going to be the number one determining factor as to what clamp pair you're going to use. Um, here you see the temperature ranges. Polypropylene being the most common, the temperature range goes from negative 22 to 194 degrees Fahrenheit. That's a continuous operating temperature. Um, it does have brief exposures up to 212 degrees Fahrenheit, but uh, we wouldn't recommend um, really over 194. Even though that's continuous operating, we wouldn't recommend even bringing it above that temperature. Santaprene, again, same thing. It just has a wider range, negative 40 to 275. That's continuous operating temperature. Aluminum, for continuous, has an even wider range, negative 65 to 500 degrees. They use it a lot in cryogenics. They'll use the aluminum, or they use it a lot in steel mills where there's a lot of heat. And so temperature plays a part in, in not only the material selection, but as we'll see later, Temperature plays a part in, in the allowable stress on a piping system, which will play a, a determining factor in your, your spacing. And so you can see this chart here from 
ASME's B31.1 power piping specification, which is a very widely accepted industry standard as far as piping systems design. And here you can see as your temperature across the bottom goes up, the allowable stress on that pipe goes down. And so the higher the temperature, the less stress that pipe is allowed to see before there'll be a problem. And what that means is that you're going to need to, as far as clamps are concerned, space them closer to each other so that the weight of the pipe and the insulation and everything else is not causing stress on that pipe. And we'll show that in a little bit um, uh, when we go over the spacing. So temperature. Um, Water, the presence of water or a wet environment or even a damp environment may play a part on your material selection. Um, it's mainly pertaining to the hardware material. So if there's fresh water, if it's outside, if it's rain, if it's a lake, if it's any type of you know standard fresh water, or they're going to wash it down with a hose water, or it's on some sort of a water spray truck, a fire truck, something like that, uh, then that presence of that fresh water would then dictate that you use some sort of a stainless steel material for the hardware. Uh, 304 being the most common and least expensive stainless steel, uh, and it's a very suitable grade of stainless steel for water applications. Furthermore, if you have salt water, that's completely different. If it's going to be in a salt water environment, um, that could be anything from in salt water on a um, on a ship or vessel or anything like that, or if the water itself um, has, uh, I'm sorry, the air itself has a high salt concentration, then uh, um, you would want to use a, like a 360 stainless steel, and that's a higher grade of stainless steel that withstands salt water applications a little bit better. And it doesn't have to be salt water either. It could be salt in the air. It could be just near to a coastal region where it'll see salt from the air, or it could even be on uh, like plow trucks. Um, up here in the northeast, I know that we have plow trucks, and uh, they, they spread salt all over the roads, and they're out, and they're, there's, a, there's a slurry of, of snow and salt and everything else, and that gets all, all up in the, the hydraulics of the trucks. And so uh, even if it's not the plow truck, if it's just a wintertime vehicle, you, you may want to use 316 stainless steel or some sort of special coating or something like that on, on the, any of the metal parts, namely the, 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 the pipe clamp parts. Chemicals will also play a role in, in, in choosing your hardware material or also uh, your clamp pair material. And so as far as it pertains to hardware material, uh, if there's some sort of caustic chemical or acid, or it's a washdown type area where they're going to be spraying this type of material on it, that may uh, cause you to use 316 stainless steel. If the um, polypropylene has a problem with it, if there's going to be a contact with hydrogen peroxide, you can see here there's a minus for polypropylene. That means right here that it's a low compatibility with hydrogen peroxide 30%. So there you wouldn't want to use polypropylene. But citric acid at 10% here, it's very resistive to that, resistant. So polypropylene would be a good match there. So that's another thing to consider. If there's any chemicals, you want to check the compatibility of both the hardware and also the clamp pair. Then the last thing to take into consideration after you thought all of that is the environment that it's going to be in. Um, is it going to be in? You know, is it going to be in? Like I said earlier, I mentioned a piece of mining equipment. This this piece of equipment is drilling through a wall. There's pieces of rock flying all around. It's going to be hitting these hoses. These hoses may be stuck on another piece of equipment, or they might be uh, impacted with the side of the the mine. So, you know, here you might want to use heavy series, even if these are low pressure. Uh, and then extreme heat and extreme cold. Again, this, is, this is, goes back to choosing the different materials. Here you see a billet heater in a, in a steel mill. The hydraulic system on this almost, almost exclusively uses aluminum clamp halves. Even if it's not near the billet heater, even if it's on the other side of, of, of the mill, they'll primarily use a aluminum for the clamp pair just because that's what they do. It's a standard. 
Um, cold equipment, if, if your, your excavator, if you plan on having an excavator that's going to be digging in the snow because you're in an area where you, know, you typically see a lot of snow like this, if you're in Alaska or, and, and you have this equipment that's always outside, uh, the polypropylene might not work. It gets brittle at certain temperatures, so there you want to go with a santoprene or aluminum. So that's the last, the last thing to consider is where is this you know, piece of equipment going to end up and where is it going to be and what's, what's the environment and the application going to be like there. So once you do all that, that kind of gives you everything you need in order to size a clamp, select a clamp, pick out your clamp, you're ready to go. You've got your clamp, you know what you need. The next thing to consider is going to be the installation process, where the clamp is going to be. And this is more for the system designers. This is um, for the, the engineers. This is for um, the contractors, the people that are doing the installation, the operators, uh, the owners of, the, of the, the facilities. And it's also good for distributors to know all this type of information because now you can help uh, your customers um, to un better understand how they should install the system and, and design it and put the, the pipe clamps into place. So the things that you'll need to consider are, are going to be the spacing, the load requirements, uh, any other equipment on the system that you need to protect, and then the routing of, the, of the, the pipe clamps and the piping through the system. So we'll start with, um, with the spacing. This excerpt here is from, from the ASME B31.1 specification. It says once you've selected the pipe hangers and you've routed the pipe around your obstacles, added any loops or other flexibility considerations, then you need to locate the hangers. The primary consideration is the excessive sag and or slope that would occur with piping supported by hangers placed too far apart. Um, I don't know that you could place the hangers too close together, but you absolutely can place them too far apart. Um, as this says here, we've already selected the hangers. Uh, the, the piping may or may not have been routed, but we're in this design phase. So what we need to do is determine how many hangers and where they're going to be. You can see in this picture, there's, this pipe sags here, which is, which is not good in any type of system. Um, some systems it's more important than others, but in the hydraulic system, probably not as important if there's a sag uh, as far as like drainability and those types of things because it's pressurized piping. But if you're in a drain system or drain lines, uh, then, then you have a problem here. Um, still though, eventually this sag causes vibration on this pipe. If this pipe is vibrating, you can see this is not really supported at all. There's no support on this whole run of pipe here. It comes around here, it comes down here, and I don't see any supports on, on this pipe. There may be something here encased in, in the uh, insulation but there really doesn't show any support. And the where this is sagging, here's a kind of an exaggerated picture, but this is what ha will happen. Here you see the straight line. Here's the deflection in the pipe, which is similar to what you would see here. Eventually, excessive vibration is going to cause stress fractures in the pipe, which eventually will crack, and then you have a failure, uh, especially with vibration and with high operating pressures. You're going to have problems in a line this long that's not supported. For that reason, we give a recommended spacing, um, and we do it by pressure. So here and size. Here you'll see a size range, a pressure range, and then our recommended spacing of 5 to 7 feet. For higher pressures, here we would say 3 to 5 feet for the same size, depending on operating pressure. Now, we came up with this recommended spacing, and it is just that, recommended spacing. The application and the service will really make the determining factor, and the, it's, it's best that the piping engineer who's analyzing the stresses on the system uh, kind of recommend uh, or use our recommended spacing and, and come up with a, a situation better for himself. Um, if you look further, the uh, ASME B31.1 and MSS SP69 uh, give a recommended spacing. Here, if we look at, for example, a half-inch pipe, it shows water service, uh, standard weight steel pipe water service at 7 feet, 
vapor service at 8 feet, copper tubing at 5 feet, copper tubing for vapor at 6 feet. So you've got 5, 6, 7, 8 feet, all different recommended values depending on the service. That kind of gives us our 5 to 7 feet spacing, and that's where we've come up with that. If you look at it even uh, uh, closer spacing on this ASTM F708, this is a shipbuilding specification. For half-inch size, hangar spacing is every 5 feet. And so because of, like we had mentioned earlier, the, the pitch and roll and yaw of a, a ship, they space things a little bit tighter, a little bit closer for safety reasons. And so all this being considered, we take that into consideration, and that's where we came up with our recommended spacing. One other thing I want to show you here, this is even, even different spacing. This is also from the ASME B31.1. Here, this is for copper tubing and for thermoplastic pipe sizes. So again, you've got all these different um, and schedules of this pipe, and depending on the schedule, your spacing will change. For example, two-inch pipe size, you're looking at four and three-quarter, maybe four and a half feet at Schedule 80, but at PVC and, and CPVC Schedule 80, you can go maybe six and a half feet. This is polypropylene Schedule 80. So you really have to consider what's recommended for that specific pipe as well. And all of this is, is, is from this ASME B31.1, which is a very uh, widely accepted industry standard as far as piping goes and system design. Another thing we need to mention, too, is, is any type of bend or corner or change in direction in the pipe should have a support before and after it. Also, again, just to be redundant from ASME, they're saying reduce the span lengths where directional changes occur. So everywhere that there's a directional change, we're saying, uh, and it's in accordance with ASME, that you should put a clamp on either side of it. Here you'll see that this uh, uh, is a 90 degree bend. As you have your force coming in this way, all of that force is going this way against this pipe and is going to want to cause vibration and movement on this pipe. And so we have this clamp here supporting it in this direction, and we have this clamp here supporting it from moving in this direction. So that's why it's very important to support all pipes, bends, or changes in direction uh, as they will be a stress point in the system. And it, these clamps are located as close as possible to the connectors to help support it. They should be uh, right, to basically directly after the connector, which will keep that connector from leaking. Components also have to be considered. The clamp should be as close as possible to any component in the system. Here we, we see a, a hefty ball valve, probably weighs a lot. Uh, this is going to be important because this ball valve, without any support here, would cause a deflection in the pipe. The deflection would probably cause stress right at your connection points, which would eventually leak. Um, so you're, 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 you've got, there's really two um, benefits to supporting every piece of, com or, excuse me, every component in the system directly before and after that component. And one is you're, you're eliminating the deflection that that p component will cause. And two, you're protecting the component from any vibration or uh, any noise in the system. This clamp right here is absorbing all the vibration that this pipe would have, and it's keeping this ball valve secured in place and keeping it from moving. This could be uh, anything here. It could be a, a, a filter. It could be any other types of valves. It could be any other type of system component that you need to support. And again, going back to this, uh, ASME specification. Support should be as close as possible to concentrated loads, such as valves and other heavy components. So any component should have the support that it needs uh, to keep this pipe straight, eliminate the deflection, and protect it from any type of system noise. Another thing that you need to consider when thinking about, mainly thinking about equipment, uh, in the system is going to be um, the shear force or the axial force necessary to slide this pipe through the clamp in this direction F. 
This is from the DIN 3015-10. DIN 3015 is a specification that for block style pipe clamps. And the dash 10 section is called technical delivery forms. And so this gives you the recommended tightening torques and then the shear force that will be required to slide this clamp axially through the, the, uh, the clamp, the, to the pipe through the clamp. And so this is our translated version. Uh, that we've translated. The spec is, is only German. It gives tightening torques, and here you have DIN 3015 Part 1, Part 2, and Part 3. Part 1 is standard series, Part 2 is heavy series, Part 3 is twin series. And by different material, it shows you in newton meters the force uh, tightening torques for those bolts. The, you don't have to worry about this right now. We've, we've given, uh, uh, we'll see in a couple more slides, a, a better version, a more user-friendly version. Then we also again have the they're calling it test power. This is the the test pressure F, the force to move it through the clamp. And so we've converted all these metric units and uh, the charts into an easier to use chart. Here we have a standard series. Uh, here's our bolts, a quarter twenty. Here's your foot pounds, and here's the force in this direction required uh, to to move that. That means that this clamp, this single clamp, can hold this much weight before it would pull through. This is important to know when you're designing any vertical runs where you have the clamp supporting a specific load or a specific um, uh, piece of equipment uh, that has a specific weight. You would need to know that. So uh, if you had a two inch tube size that's in our group six, it could hold a 450 pound piece of equipment, this clamp. If that's not enough for you, then you would have to go to the heavy series and it's in also the group, the H6 and the heavy series, that one could hold 1,845 pounds. And so that's another uh, thing to take into consideration when you're choosing your standard series or your heavy series is the load that you're going to see on that pipe. One thing to mention, too, here is this applies to clamps with hexagon bolts and cover plates only. Um, if you're using some other, like a washer, or you're not using the cover plate at all, then these torque and, uh, and shear force values don't apply. We don't test it that way because we would always recommend using a cover plate to give an even dispersion of the tightening across the clamp and an even grip on the pipe. And so everything that we've tested uh, is with using a cover plate. The next type of load that you might see on your, on your um, support is going to be the vertical load. So here you have a clamp. This is mounted to the ceiling. You have the vertical weight of this pipe pulling down, and it's pulling down on this clamp. The vertical load capacity is going to be limited by the weakest component. So you're only as good as your weakest link, I guess is the saying. That's going to be the bolt. The bolt is going to be the, the, the weak link, I guess we would call it, um, in this pipe clamp. And so what we need to look at there is the, the tension relationship for these bolts. For example, standard series uses a quarter inch 20, quarter 20 bolt. It's a grade 5, so here we have the grade 5 section. For quarter 20 bolt, that clamp in pounds can hold a 2,029 pound load per, per bolt. And you have two of those in each clamp. So essentially, you've got 4,000 4, pounds you can have. That means you can have a guy doing pull-ups on that thing all day, and that pipe's not coming down. Just to give you a little bit more of an example, here's some weight of, of, of piping. And so if you have a 4-inch pipe, which is going to be the largest size our standard series can cover, with that quarter 20 bolt, the bare pipe weighs 108 pounds per 10-foot section. Filled with water and covered in insulation, 1-inch insulation, it weighs 177 pounds per 10-foot section. You're going to have two clamps in a 10-foot section if you use our recommended spacing. So that means each clamp essentially would hold half of that, 177 pounds. And each clamp has two bolts, so each bolt would see basically a quarter of this 177 pounds. So you're looking at less than 50 pounds on that bolt that can hold 2,000. So as far as the pipe is concerned, none of, every clamp that we offer can withstand the weight of whatever pipe you've got on there. The, the thing to take into consideration is going to be this, the components that you're supporting, the weight of 
any valves or system um, components or uh, filters and, and that type of thing. And just to kind of show you that um, these numbers are true, we've done our own in-house uh, load testing on the vertical load. And so here we have a clamp welded to our test fixture. We have a pipe through the clamp, and then we have um, uh, the system that pulls down on either side evenly to pull straight down on this clamp. And so we cranked it up to 2,500 pounds. And at 2,500 pounds, we see a little bit of a separation here between the clamp and the tube. And we can see on the bottom half, the cover plate is bent. So then we cranked it up to 3,500 pounds. At 3,500 pounds, you can see that there's a, there's a big separation on the top half of the clamp. And you can see on the bottom half of the clamp that this weld, uh, sorry, cover plate is, is really getting distorted. So logically, the next thing to do would be to crank it all the way up to 5,000 pounds, which is as high as our system goes. At 5,000 pounds from this picture, it's a little hazy, but you can see a huge separation, and you see it a little bit better here. A huge separation. This is our test unit. You can see it a little bit better here. So you have our tube, and then we have our uh, U-shaped unit that holds it and pulls down in this direction. You can see that the top plate on that is completely warped, and we'll see another better view. This is what it looked like afterwards, after we took the, the clamp out. So at 5,000 pounds of pull-down force on that clamp, which basically you could support a truck off of this thing, you have uh, deformity of, of the bolts, deformity of the cover plate, the weld plate that was welded down, really no, no, no problem there. And the plot you can see is, is, is a little bit uh, deformed here. And so at 5,000 pounds, that's 25 pounds per bolt. It's well above the rating that they give for the bolt. And we uh, didn't test any higher because our system can't test any higher than that. So at 5,000 pounds with no failure, uh, these snaps are rated for um, much more than the intended service that they're going to be used in. So that kind of gives you everything you need in order to, to select the clamp and size it properly, determine what types of hardware you're going to use and what series you're going to use, and how to apply that clamp to the application, and how to help somebody who needs to know where to put the clamps, how to size them, what kind of loads and vibration they can see. So um, in closing, it kind of just, uh, we, we've covered everything I think necessary. If anyone has any questions, you can type them into the question box now. That would, that would kind of be the best, and then I can answer those as we go, or I can answer them in a return email if you'd like that. Um, everything that we've seen here uh, it will give you the, the, the knowledge to, to make informed decisions pertaining to selection and application of our pipe clamps. One thing I just want to say before we uh, wrap things up here today is I just want to direct your attention uh, to our website for one second. And what we're doing now is Behringer, with these online trainings, we have them listed on our website. So here you'll see our, uh, our home page at BehringerSystems.com. There's two ways to get to the trainings. We have this um, starburst here that says New Online Trainings. And then you can also use this button on the left-hand side. When you click to that, it'll show you any upcoming product-specific webinars, and you can use these links to register for them. Now, this one will be removed after today. This is a presentation we're, we're having right now. And these are two of our upcoming ones. And so you have two separate times, a 9 and a 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, that you can register uh, to view one of those sessions. In addition to that, there's this icon on the top. It looks like a video camera. If you click on that, here you have all our previously recorded webinars. So we've done one on our basic courses on industrial filtration, our new CH design of sanitary clamps, the Ruddleman ball valve line that we represent. We did a basic course on industrial pipe clamps and a basic course on Molly industrial filters that we offer and the RHCH sanitary products. Now we're starting with our advanced courses, 
And so the advanced course of pipe clamps will be listed on here also. You can download it by right-clicking on the link and doing Save Target As. You can save the target onto your computer, and it'll be a Windows Media format, or you can just click on the link to view it live off the website. So that, uh, that about covers everything that, that I wanted to cover here today. Uh, if anyone has any questions or anything like that, I'll leave the webinar open uh, for the next 10 minutes or so. Feel free to use the, the, the question box or the chat box to ask any questions that you might have and I can answer those. Other than that, um, I, I want to thank everyone. I know that, um, that, it, that an hour is a, is a long time out of your day, so I appreciate your time and hope to see you in one of our upcoming webinars. Thank you very much.